First of all, I want to say the words of gratitude to my dear friend, Minister Edelstein, who is not only the friend and the permanent partner during the last years for all our events, but also a biggest contributor to the European diaspora affairs. And uh, we are so grateful to you, Mr. Minister, and we are so happy to see you here uh, close to us, Thank as you. usual. Uh, today is a very important day. We are commemorating uh, the, uh, the Holocaust uh, Liberation Day. It's the day of liberating by Red Army the largest Nazi camp, uh, Auschwitz, which was, as you know, uh, the planet of evil, uh, the planet of horror, according to very famous Jewish writer, Mr. Dinur. But today, we also want to use this opportunity to speak about actual things, about future of Europe and the Jewish diaspora in Europe. And this is the, the biggest chance for us to speak about these important issues. That's why, with your permission, I will shortly express some of the ideas. First of all, an important lesson from Holocaust is the need for strong, independent Jewish state. If such a state existed 70, 80 years ago, we would probably not be holding any memorial ceremony today. The existence of the Jewish state 50 years ago enabled the achievement of historical justice by bringing one of the most significant Nazi criminals, Adolf Eichmann, to court of law and to obtain meaningful justice. Lessons of the Holocaust should be learned and remembered rapidly as they are the only insurance we have that these things will not happen again. In this regard, I wish to commend the President of European Parliament, newly elected Mr. Martin Schulz, for his important decision to hold this event on a permanent annual basis together with us, the European Jewish Congress. This event is not only a commemorative event, but also an event where Europe stops from its day-to-day -day business and closely examines its past, its current attitudes towards its values, its morals, its human rights, protection, and its security. We are witnessing today the revival and flourishing of Jewish life and Jewish communities all around Europe. But at the same time, we are witnessing again the rise of the dangerous anti-Semitism. For example, the result of yesterday, the German Bundestag finalized a special survey, which is, uh, was very indicative 20% of all Germans hold uh, anti-Semitic views, is the Germany of today. European leadership should do all they can to fight this dangerous phenomenon, as it threatens not only the Jews, but also peaceful life in Europe. Next point, very important, minorities and immigrants in Europe should have equal rights, but at the same time should have equal responsibilities and cannot act in violence 
against any other minority or against the majority by trying to impose their own thoughts and beliefs. By not fulfilling their commitments and responsibility, they lose their rights to become full citizens of Europe. Next, World War II and the Holocaust teachers that democracy is an important and fundamental component of the life in modern times, but can also be used and exploited in the most disastrous manner. The strongest example is Nazi who gained power in a democratic system. In this respect, we should carefully watch over what is known as the Arab Spring to make sure it does become the Arab Winter. And we should carefully examine what is called multiculturalism process in Europe. Europe should learn how to balance between the need to protect human rights and the need to protect the basic right of life and freedom, and therefore its own security. Europe should be commended for its brave decision to strengthen the sanction on the, Iran, on the Iranian regime, as this move may prevent the need to make more extreme action to save world peace. I want to add here one thing, because it was the decision of yesterday. It is a very historical thing. Never in history, Europe did some, such a brave thing. And uh, we, we have really to applaud the community of 27 countries for such a historical thing, because we have to understand this is the strongest thing Europe could do to postpone as much as possible the militaristic scenario. And this is a very important thing, because all of us do not want war. And, uh, but it doesn't mean that we have to be afraid of such a war, because we, uh, in um, so-called Luxembourg Forum, where I am a president, examined all possible scenarios about militaristic development. Basically, I will not speak about details, there are four scenarios. All scenarios are bad, but they are better if we compare them in, in, with, with a case when Iran start to attack first. Europe has a strong cultural bond with the Jewish people with the Israel, with the Jewish state, which shares similar values. We should understand that I think that Israel is one of the most democratic countries in the world. One of the goals of European Jewish Congress this year will be to strengthen this bond and to push for upgraded ties between Israel and the European Union. That's why we are thinking today and uh, almost doing today with the help of our dear friend Yuli Edelstein to organize this year something in May in Prague, the summit of European Prime Ministers together with the Prime Minister of Israel Mr. Netanyahu, with whom we had several discussions on this point, and he supports this idea to organize a summit, Europe-Israel, to strengthen all dimensions of the collaborations between European Union, Europe in general, and Israel. These points are shortly about our agenda today.